Hey guys, Professor Benson here. Just going to show you how to build this customer purchasing habits or RFM chart. The RFM stands for it's a it's a marketing term for recency, frequency, and monetary value. So it's going to tell us the time since last purchased. That's the recency, of course. The frequency is going to be things like the total orders and the total products, and then the monetary value will be things like this total revenue and average order value. There's a couple of things I really like about this chart. A, it's a real chart, like this is something that um, many companies use or some variation on it. The other thing that I liked about it is we're going to end up using a number, we can learn a number of new things. So I'm going to be teaching you a little about some create calculated values. So you notice Aaron Bergman here is at 1.1 years and this is 13 days. So we want to put days if it's less than a year, if it's more than a year, we want to do something like years. It's also got, we're going to end up having a, a parameter which allows you to put in a, I want to filter by 90 days or some number of days and or change the color. So there's a number of things that I really like about it. The other is that uh, there's some, so there's some clever things that we're going to learn by doing this project. So just wanted to show you where I got this from. This is from what's called Workout Wednesday. That's what that WOW or W-O-W is. So every week they have a different one out. I really liked this one from, this is from 2021. This is to see hers. And then these are the list of requirements. Um, we're going to use the Superstore data set that I've loaded with you, which is, so the one they've got goes up through 2022, I believe, or 2021. Um, the one we're going to do goes up through 2018. And it turns out the values are the same, just the dates have changed. So we're just going to continue to use that one. Um, and then I took it from right here, Andy Kreibel, who's got a great Tableau channel. Uh, he works at a place called The Data School. He has built, or he ended up building this out. The and and um, the beauty of it is is they just gave him and asked him to recreate it and so he does but the, it turns out he makes a bunch of mistakes or takes a bunch of wrong turns in the process of doing that which for me was fascinating to watch but I think students I felt students would get kind of frustrated with that and so I'm recording this so that we can kind of go straight to um, getting it done but if you'd like to I'll link the description or I'll link. A link to this and to this, uh, the work, Workout Wednesday, I'll put the link to this in the description below. Okay, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm now back here with the dashboard. We're going to create this total orders, total revenue, average order value first. Then we'll do total products, um, which is, these three are pretty straightforward. This one, the only tricky thing is we're going to change it from a bar to a circle. And then that also means we have to do a little bit of adjustment to make this line up in the center. Then we'll add this time since last purchased. Okay, so we'll do these three um, and then uh, the total products and the time since last purchased. So I've opened up Tableau Public. We're going to go ahead and use, go ahead and connect it to Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and use the sample Superstore. This is the one that you have. We're going to go ahead and use that. We'll open it up. And we're going to use the orders. Okay. So this should have 9,994 rows. Okay. And then we're going to end up creating some calculated fields. And I want to show this is why it's important to understand the underlying data. So we've got here, I'm, I'm now back at the completed one. If you look here at Aaron Bergman, who's our very first customer, you'll see that he's got three orders and then 13 total products. And I just want to show what that looks like in the underlying data. So if I go over here to Excel, so I'm in this Superstore Excel file, and I'm going to go ahead and add some formatting here to the headers so that we can easily um, recognize them. Okay, so if I go here to customer name, and I now go to data and filter, okay, and I go to this, our very first customer, this Aaron Bergman, okay, notice that um, this is not one line per transaction, but it has a separate line. So some databases will put one line per, per transaction, and then in a separate table, they'll put all the items that you ordered. This one has, so like you'll see these three in March over here in, on March 7th, 2014, he ordered, he had these three products. So he had these chairs, a piece of art and some art storage. And then he's got a quantity over here. On February 18th, he made another order, and on November 10th, 2016, he made another order. So those are three unique orders, like that's three visits to the store. And so that is what that is what this total orders is capturing. 
The total products here is actually just the quantity of products that he ordered. So notice we've got three unique orders, $886 in total revenue and 13 products. So the three unique orders we saw here, okay? The sales, obviously we just add up that and we get this 886, okay? And then the quantity here, if we add that up, this is the 13. So you might say, well, really what I care about is maybe the number of unique different products he ordered, or this is the quantity of things. And that's what we're gonna show is the quantity, this dollar value, and that they were three unique transactions. So I just wanted uh, you to be aware of that so that you understood what this underlying data represented. So I'm now back in Tableau, and I wanna show you two different ways to create this chart. The first way is gonna be using a table and then converting it to horizontal bar chart. And then the second way is we'll just start with the horizontal bar chart. Okay, so to do this, I'm gonna first drag over customer name here onto rows. And it's going to say, hey, there's like a thousand of them. Are you sure you want to do that? We're going to say yes. Now, the other trick is I've put the names. Usually, we would probably want to put the customer ID and the name because we would be concerned that, you know, customers can have, you know, more than one customer can have the same name, especially if it's a very common name. I'm going to now put sales up here. I'm going to drag it right here to the text. And then I'm going to put quantity. So we'll have this quantity and sales. This reminds me that we're going to need to change these to dollars. Okay. And then what we want to do is to put the, um, to put the number of uh, the count, the unique number of orders. I'm going to drag order ID here to text. Okay. And you'll notice here it's made it blue. And so we need to just tell it, we need to go down here and say, look, we want this as the count, dis whoops, count distinct. And then I'm going to drag it down here. Okay, now if I get rid of it, the fast way to do this would be to shift right click on a PC, which is which is option drag on a Mac, on a Mac. But this works. So this is our 13. This is our three. Now to get our sales, we're going to create a new measure and we're going to end up calling it. Um, we want the average order quantity or average order amount, which is going to say I want to take this eight. 186 divided by, I've done three orders and I've totaled $886. So to get the average order amount, I'm going to divide that by three, right? So we're going to go ahead and create a calculated field. Okay. And I'm going to call this the average order amount. And it's essentially going to be this, the sum divided by So we could type that in, uh, the count of, the unique count of order IDs. We'll say, okay. And then now we'll go ahead and drag this over as well. So I can either drag it here, or I could drag it up here somewhere. Both do the same thing, okay? So we've got, We've got our four fields. I'm going to rearrange them to match what he's got and we'll add the dollar amounts and then we'll convert this table into a uh, we'll convert this table into a bar chart. So we're going to end up putting this is now on the completed one. We'll put that three, the total orders here on the left and then revenue, then average order and then total products on the right. And then we need to convert it to a bar chart so it looks like so it looks like this. Okay? So we'll go ahead and go back. So we're gonna go ahead and put, the, the way we change it is we're gonna drag it up here. So I'm gonna put sales, no, I'm gonna put the um, three first. So that is this, this uh, count of order ID. Okay, and then I want the sum of sales. Then I want the average order amount. And then I want the quantity. So it should say distinct, right? Because that is this count of distinct order IDs. Let's go ahead and change this sales to dollars and this quantity, or the sales to quant the sales to dollars and the average order to dollars. So we'll go ahead and go over here to sales and change the default properties down over to number. And we'll go ahead and put this here in zero decimal places. Okay. And then same thing here on average order amount. Change default properties, number format. Okay. Wonderful. Now, to change this, what we're gonna end up doing is I'll go over here to show me, and I'm gonna get a, just click on this, and it has made them four, four bar charts. Now, the 
confusing thing for me is it's now going to put their um, it's going to put them down on this axis down at the bottom. So you're always looking down here at the bottom to say, okay, distinct count of order, quantity, sales, and average order amount. Okay, and then you'll notice here it's put them all on what's called the marks card. Um, so that we now we're, we'll I mean, in a second we'll change the color so that it matches the color scheme that she has. But I want to show you also the second way we could do it. So I'm just going to do this again. So you've already done it this way. This is fine. Let me just clear this out. But we're going to go ahead and put the customer name here on rows. We'll do add all members. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and put sales up here on columns. So I've got it here on the right. And then we'll go ahead and put quantity here on the right, average order amount here on the right, and then the... Um, the unique number of orders. So I'll go ahead and drag this up and it's not gonna like it, but we'll go ahead and say, let's do add all and then we'll see what it does here with the orders and then we need to convert it to account distinct. I'm gonna drag that one over here to the right. No, oh, the count distinct is actually gonna be the first one, so that was correct. Okay, now, Either one is fine. We've now got the count of orders, the sales, the quantity. Oh, and then I need to put the average order amount here. So to add the mark labels, the fast way to do it is just click this T, which just says show mark labels. So I've got the three, the $186, the $295, and then the 13. Okay. Then what let's do, um, we need to change the colors. So to get the colors on here, we're going to go ahead and drag these measure names all the way onto the or onto the color. So these are all our measure names, and so we're going to go ahead and drag them onto the color, and it's going to have automatically assign them. We're going to change just a little bit, you know, to, to bring over so that it matches. Um, but I think the red and the orange is pretty. Uh, we're going to change one of these to gray, and then the the blue that we've got is a little bit different, but. I'm not sure if I want to change that. We might just leave that there for right now. So we've got a color. Let's go ahead and change. We're going to change this one to that circle. So what, we'll, what we're going to do, notice um, I'm right now I'm on this all marks card, which means if I change something here, it's going to affect all of them. I want to do for each of these, so this distinct count of order ID, the sum of sales and average order amount, I want to change these. The, right now they're going to say automatic, and I want to move them to bar. Uh, and that way, if I change things, Tableau isn't going to try and, you know, right with automatic, it's going to try and automatically update. And we don't want that. I want to stay these to stay at bar. But then when I get over to this one, I want us to make this one a circle, right? So it's got these tiny circles right now. And you'll notice it's got the length, like the further out. I would want to kind of create a lollipop chart, but it's got um, sort of, you know, their, their distance, kind of like a bar chart, changes with the quantity. And we're going to change that. But but that's the way we've got it right now. So we're gonna make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and then in order to make this fit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and if I click up here, I can make the rows a little bit. If you'll notice here, I'm gonna move. It's a little bit tricky to get the, uh, but you can, you can resize those rows. Let me go ahead and move this. That looks like it's a little bit more than I need. I'm just looking at this Alexandra down at the bottom, but this looks about right. And I'll click on it again so that they all come back. And then what I want to do is I'm going to center, I'm going to put the numbers inside and then we'll go ahead and see how we can center this up. So I'm going to go here to the label on it. And I, again, I'm on this count distinct order ID and I'm going to center it. Oh, I centered the wrong one. See this one, you gotta be on the right one. So let's go over here, this is the quantity one. So I wanna be on the quantity one. Now I'm gonna label that and I want this to be center and center. Okay, so that has centered that over here. Let's go ahead and we'll change this to a gray. So I'm gonna click on its color, edit colors. And if I use, I think the Tableau 10 has a gray in it. So if I do the quantity, I think that'll be, I think the one they had was a little bit uh, closer. If I end up doing, let me go ahead and try this. If I do quantity and apply, let's go with, let's go with that one. I'll hit okay. So I'm in the Seattle grays. 
Okay, so what we need to, needing to do is we need to um, center this. We can decide if I want to make those numbers white. If I went with a little bit darker gray, I might make those numbers white. But let's go ahead and I'm going to line these up in the center. Let me show you how to do that. So this part is kind of tricky, but it's kind of a clever little trick. Let me just show you what we're going to be doing. I can click just up here in the columns and I can double click and just say, give me something that's the average of one. So it's essentially created a bar chart here that is ones all the way down. And notice I could on this aggregate mark of uh, that's just a one, I could drag this quantity onto the as a label for it. And now it's 20, like it's one wide. And I could then if I put the label here in the middle, I've just set the this number up on the middle and we're going to end up using so this line essentially i've just created a red rectangle here and put a number on it and that's essentially what we're going to do here with these but we're going to make them circles uh, in fact we're also going to do that with this time since last purchase as uh that's how we're actually going to create this one right here as well because these line we want these lines to be always the same width but then have this text on it that says 1.1 years or 13 days and they're both the same width that's what we're going to go ahead and that's the little trick we're going to use for that so let me just go ahead and undo that and get rid of both of those okay so i'm going to just get get rid of that so we're back here so what i'm going to do first is drag this uh i'm going to control drag which copies it it's command drag on a mac and i'm going to drag it onto the label so i'm control dragging it here onto the label I could just grab it from over here as well and drag it. That doesn't do anything because we already had the number in the middle. Okay, but then what I can do is I'm now I'm going to double click on this and just say, look, instead of being the sum of quantity, I'm going to do the average and I'm going to make this 0 0.5 and here's why. I'm going to make it all 0 0.5. That means I'm making every value 0 0.5. And then because it's got this axis down here going to 0 to 1, uh, 0 to 0 0.5, they're, they're all right. You know, they're all pushed over here on the right. So I'm now going to right click on this and edit the axis. Okay. And change this to fixed and make it go from zero to one. Okay. And so that is how we center these all up, which is that 0 0.5, like right now they're, you know, now they're centered within this axis that goes from zero to one. So let me show that one more time in this video, or you can pause it and re redo it. But essentially what I've done is we had dragged we had dragged the, um, we dragged the label down or down here to label. So if I, I can take it off and put it again from, this is quantity, just drag it here to label. So I've got the sum of quantity, nothing changes because we already had the number here. And now I'm just going to change this to be a column that is 0 0.5 wide, or you know, I've filled it a, a, a column with just 0 0.5 all the way down. And then we're going to edit the axis to center this up. Okay. Make it fixed going from zero to one and hit enter and now let's move that over okay we're going to do now the same thing to be able to do the time since last purchase or the day since last purchase so what we'll go ahead and create one right here or right up here and i'm going to call it an average of one so i'm just making something that's the average of one and that's just to give me something that is one point all the way down and then i'm going to drag this all the way over here to the left Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and move the number here to the middle and we'll slide this right up and then we'll, we'll start creating the calculations on, you know, time since last purchase. So let's go ahead, make sure we're on this average of one. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the label in the middle. That'll drag it there. And then the other kind of clever thing is if I want to get rid of this gap and I do, what I'm going to do is go down here and edit this axis. And it's going to be going, if I make it fixed, notice it's going to 1.05. And that's what makes, that's what makes this, that what's make the gap. So if I go make it go from zero to one and hit enter, watch, it's going to fill that in, right? And it filled that right in. Okay. And so now we need to make this instead of being all ones, which isn't very useful. We need to now make it our day since last purchased. So we fixed the width and this uh, with by editing this axis. Now let's go ahead and create this calculated measure. So we're going to go ahead and calculate the days since last purchased. Um, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so we've we've adjusted the width here to make this fill up. So now what we need to do is calculate the when was the last purchase each customer made, 
and then calculate the difference between that and today. Or in this case, we're going to do it as of um, December 31st, 2017, because this data ends at the end of 2017. So I'll put these formulas up here on the screen. And then what we'll do is let's go ahead and create those. So the last purchase date, so let's go up and we'll create a calculated field. Okay, and we'll call this last purchase date. And that's actually just going to be, this is an easy one. This is just the max of the order date. Okay, so I'm just going to drag that right there. Now, we have to have by customer name on the rows in the worksheet to make this work. Otherwise, this would give us the highest date in the entire data set, which would just be December 31st, 2017. Okay, so that gives us the last purchase date. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you two different ways to calculate the, la the days since last purchase. Okay, so this first one is going to use the date diff function, and then another one we're going to use the make date function. So on this one, we're going to go ahead and use date diff. So this is, I'm going to say days since last, and I'm going to say date diff just so that we know the difference. So we now are just going to use the date diff function. Okay, and so I'm just going to say here is my date diff. And if you click over here, click that little arrow, date diff says I need the date part like a day, a month, or a year a start date and an end date. We can ignore the start of the week and you'll notice that because it's in brackets, that tells us it's optional. That's what those brackets mean. So the date part is we're gonna start, I'm just gonna go right here and we're gonna type in day. That has to be within single quotes. The start date is gonna be the last date purchase, this last purchase date, okay? And then the, um, we're gonna end up putting, there's a couple ways to do this. We're gonna do this with the number sign. So that is uh, 12, 31, 2017. Oops. And then uh, put the hashtag at the end. Okay. And so that'll, that'll give us that date diff. Okay. I'm also now going to put days since last. We'll call this with make date. And so what this is going to do is we're going to use this make date function which says you put in the year, the month, and the day. And the reason they do this is that in Europe and in the rest of the world, they often do day, month, year. And so this just helps people standardize it. So we're going to put 2017, 12, 31. So it's creating that date, no matter which region of the world you're in, minus last purchase date. And that will also give us the number of days. Okay, so if I now end up going over here to our, I can click here to see this data, right? And if I say, look, just show the fields, I just wanna see the, uh, I'm gonna unclick all, I'm gonna say days since last, day since last and last purchase date, the, these should be the same, right? 418 days because this person's last purchase date was November 8th, 2016. Okay, perfect. So now what we'll do is I'll use this date diff one and we're just going to drag that up. Make sure you're we're on this one that's average one right here. So not on all, but we need to make sure we're here. And we're going to drag this date since last up to the label. And now that's going to say for Aaron Bergman, that was 416 days ago. Okay. So this is looking pretty good. We just need to um, we just need to do a, fix a little bit of the formatting. So change these colors to match what we've got. And then I think we're going to be, um, oh, and then we need to do this days versus years. Uh, we're going to use a calculated value for that. And then we'll start building the dashboard. Okay. So to do the, let's look, go ahead and look at these colors. So we kind of want this light green and then the blue. So let's, let's make the total orders, the blue, the total revenue, the red, and the order value, the yellow or this, sorry, the, the orange. Okay, so we want this one to be the blue. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna click here. Let's just click the color, edit the colors. And we wanna make, we wanna make that one. So that is the distinct count. We wanna make that, we wanna make this one the blue. We wanna make the total revenue, this, this one the red. Okay, and then we want to make the average order amount the orange. 
Okay, that is going to stay here. And then this one, this average of one, I think she goes down to this green, orange, teal. And I think it is this light green right there. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so how does that look? So we've got the green, this light teal, the red, the orange. Okay, so I think we're getting pretty close. All right, so what we need to do, I think we're going to end up making these all a little bit darker. And then what we'll do is, um, and then we also need to add, so these lines here, you would think those would be the axis lines, but the axis lines sit behind the chart. So we're actually going to add reference lines. So let's go ahead and do that. Reference lines are usually used to show things like the average or a target, and are we above or below our target. So I want to show you that. We'll create these, and then we'll um, add these days versus years, and then we'll start building the actual dashboard itself. So in this section, we're going to go ahead and add reference lines, and then we're going to change this to be the days versus years. Um, but we first need to remove, there's a column header right here, and this is normally what you would think of is what we would change the um, thickness of and the darkness of to make these lines. But it turns out that Tableau um, puts the line behind the bars. And so we end up having to do a little bit of a workaround. So I'm going to right click here anywhere in this area and say format. And then we're going to go up to the one up here that is the borders. And we're going to go down to the column divider. So watch this line. I'm going to go ahead and just say none. Okay, and then let's just see. Nope, those are both gone. There is still kind of a dotted line there that I believe is just kind of indicating that it is there, but those are gone. Okay, and then to get around it, we're doing a little bit of a workaround. And frankly, this is a weakness in Tableau. This sh we should be able to have an easier way to add a line. But um, what I'm going to do here on I'm going to name sheet one RFM so that we know that this is our RFM sheet. On sheet two, you don't have to do this, but just watch me. The normal way to use these reference lines is to put, I'm going to put this order date up here, and then I'm going to add quarter. And if I um, hit the, this is called the drill down, I could do month as well. And then I'm just going to bring this up. So it's year and quarter. And I'm just going to put sales on the rows. Okay. And it's, it's defaulted to this line chart. If I go up here, I'm going to go down to this column chart. Now it would have defaulted to, if I end up going here, it, it typically defaults to this Tableau 10, but I've changed it to the blues uh, already. But um, typically what you would want to use a reference line. So if I go up, it is for something either to say, what was the average or to show like a target or a goal that you had set. So if I go up here to analytics, if I want a constant line, I'm going to, I'm left clicking and dragging and you'll see it says add a reference line to the table and I'm going to put in a um, hundred thousand dollars, right? So then now you can see I've got this reference line that's a hundred thousand dollars and I could format it to be darker or different colors and that sort of thing so that we could see that these last two quarters of the year, we were ahead of target and the first two quarters we were below target. I'm going to now click and drag to remove it. Okay, and then if I want an average line, I'm gonna I'm left clicking and dragging, and you'll see it says I could do table, pain, or cell. So table obviously is gonna do this is the overall average across all four years. Drag that off. Obviously, the average now for the pain is each it's each year is its own group, and so it's doing the average for each year. And then obviously, if I did it for each cell, it would do for each line. Okay, so that is typically, and I could also do this with a band, and then this trend line is very similar to Excel's trend line function. Um, it's going to plot a line of best fit, like a regression line to it. So if I now, I'm left clicking and dragging, I'm going to do linear, and you'll see that it has got a line to show the trend for each year. And again, this is very similar to the add a trend line function in Excel, if you're familiar with that. So we're actually doing a workaround. We're using it for formatting, whereas this is really supposed to be for a substantive thing about showing reference to a target or what we should be at or other schools in our state are doing or so on. But I'm back here. Let me go back to the RFM chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a constant line at zero. In fact, I'm going to leave it at one because I think it makes it a little bit easier to see and to edit. So I'm going to drag a constant line and I'm going to add it here to each of these. And I'm just going to leave it at one. So that one's at one. I'm now going to do it here on this count distinct at one. 
Okay. I'm going to now do it for this, for each of the others, or uh, for sales and average order amount. So a, a constant line, we're going to end up making them zero here in a second. So that's at four. I'm going to put that one at zero. Let's just see what happens there. And then let's do it for the last one, this average order amount. And I'm going to put it at, I'm going to put it at zero as well. Okay, and then the easiest way, you'll notice it's added a header down here at one. I have a hard time clicking on those. So I typically try and get the space. Do you see how I'm now on the line? And I'm gonna right click that. And if I edit it or format it, so edit is going to say, look, I don't wanna show that label down at the bottom or on the tooltip. It's not clear, I'm gonna make this zero. And then it's not clear to me if that line, if when I edit it here, if it will allow me to make the line. So I'm gonna make that as thick as possible and I'm gonna make it this black. Hit okay. Okay, so I've got two. This is a little bit thick, but I think I've got both of these lines here. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and edit that and I'm gonna make it one less. Oh, now I'm doing the other one. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna put this at zero. Okay, so that one's gonna be right there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and edit it. I'm gonna say none and none. And then I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna make the color black and I'm gonna make the thickness here. The only thing I need to see is do if I make need to make that opacity, if I need to put this up to 100%. So let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so that is, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and change that opacity. So let me get onto it, whoops. Let's go to format, which will put it, it's the same thing, but I'm gonna put it right here. I'm going to put it at black. I'm at this line. I'm going to make this 100%. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to do the same thing now for each of the other three. Okay, format. So one less thick than that. I'm going to make it the black and drive this opacity up to 100%. Meaning opacity is, is how transparent it is, and I want it to be not transparent. Okay, so now I'm gonna click, I'm actually going to double click on that so I've got this. So now I'm gonna go to this line until I can kind of right click on it. Let's just go ahead and format that line. So I'm, again, I'm gonna put the second thickness here and then, um, oh, we, since I'm on it, let me go ahead and get rid of the zero down at the bottom. And the way I do that again is I'm gonna right click, whoops. I almost had it, there we go. Edit, and I want none and none. It's the label that's the zero down at the bottom. Okay, one last. Okay, edit, none. Drive opacity up. Okay, and now I'm gonna double click. Okay, so now we've got our reference line. Again, that's way harder than it ought to be, um, but it is what it is, so that's what we're gonna do. And then um, in the next part, I'm gonna go ahead and show how to add, uh, format these numbers so that we get the days and years. Okay, so to do the days, I'm gonna click X on the format part so we go and go back to data. And we're gonna, we're, we've been using this date diff here on this average one. So I'm, I'm right here, we've got this, this measure right there and i'm going to create a new one that's a duplicate of this and modify it okay so i'm just going to go ahead and say duplicate and then this duplicate again you might have to widen this up to be able to see that this is the copy below it and i'm going to rename this in fact i'm just going to click edit so that we can rename it and so i'm going to call this date uh, day since last but i'm going to call this if then because we're gonna use an if then statement. And essentially what we want it to do is say, look, if this formula is greater than, is less than 365, then say days, put, put those number of days. And if it's greater than 365, convert it to years. So we're gonna now, uh, I'm gonna put this as an if then statement. So we're gonna say, if this is less than 365, then, and you don't have to put, but I always kind of put the if then, I put these statements on different lines, then, just give us the number of days, which is what that formula calculated. Okay. Else, which means if it's not less than 365, 
then we're going to put that formula, I'm just copying and pasting it, divided by 365. That's how we're going to convert it to years. And then if you just leave it there, this is kind of the trick. Um, you have to say end. So you'll notice it says calculation and it says expects an end. And so we have to type end. Okay, so if that is less than 365, then put days. If it's greater than, put years. Oh, and we're going to add one other thing. We're going to put a negative here, which is going to feel weird, but essentially it's going to make this one a positive number and then this one a negative number. And then Tableau allows us through a little trick I'm going to show you in a second, uh, we can format those differently. And so um, you can format a positive number differently than a negative number, and we're going to exploit that trick. Okay, so I'm going to put this in a pop-up box with that formula. But again, this is just saying I want the number of days if it's less than a year, and I want it converted to years. So I'm going to hit Apply and OK. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to take this measure off. I'm just going to click and drag it off. And now I'm going to put this days since on the label. Okay, and make sure you're on this mark card. The first time I did it, I was on one of the wrong ones, and so it dropped it somewhere else. So you should have for Aaron Bergman 416, right? And then um, we have 13 here. So what did, is this the one? Let's just go ahead and edit in shelf. Oh, that's still the date diff. I've dragged the wrong one up. So I'm going to drag this off, and I want my if-then measure up on the label. Okay, so you'll notice it's got negative 1.1 because it's 416 days, so he's more than a year. And then this one is 1389. And if I go down, there, I just saw one that was um, like uh, more than a year. Okay, so what we need to end up doing is um, now we're going to go ahead and exploit that trick. So if I want it to have days and years, I need to do, um, we're going to do a custom format. And you can do these in Excel as well, and I've done it, um, but we're going to exploit it here in Tableau. And so I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and now do number format. So default properties, number format. And instead of doing like currency or percentage, we're going to do custom. And custom is going to say, how do you want me to format positive numbers, then a semicolon, then how do you want me to do negative numbers, then a semicolon, and how do you want to do zeros? Uh, but number two and number three are actually optional. So I'm going to put number sign or hashtag um, days, semicolon, number sign dot zero, because that'll give us a decimal place, years. Okay, so number of days, number, and if I put like zero, zero, that would give me to two decimal places and so on. I just want one, and we're going to hit OK. Okay, so this should say 1.1 years, 13 days. And if I keep going down, I need to find one that's another bit of like years. Okay, 2.3 years down here on Andy Grabode. Okay, so there's no decimal place on days and there is on years. Okay, and that's a clever little trick that shows, in, in fact, it's gotten rid of that negative sign in front of it, which is nice. Right, so now we've got days and years. We've gotten rid of all the and we all the other formatting. We've added the reference line. So I think we're ready to go ahead and create the dashboard.